So, uh, Regents Review, Skill Check 3. So questions 1 and 2, we have to utilize the information in this first sentence. So it tells us to calculate the molarity. And then also notice, to get all points for this particular question, we have two things that we have to do both. So we have to show a correct numerical setup and a calculated result. So first thing, when it asks you to calculate anything, okay, I'm going to typically say right away, turn to your table T that has all of the major mathematical relationships you need to be able to use. Find the mathematical relationships based on molarity, the capital M. And if you look carefully, you'll see that uh, it will show you molarity equals the number of moles divided by the number of liters. And then if you look further down your table T, you will also see um, MAVA equals MBVB. So we have two different mathematical relationships that have molarity, the capital M, in them. So go back up to your information and take a look. So I notice right away I have a 20.0 milliliter. Milliliter is a volume and it's in the unit of milliliters. Okay. If I continue across, I see that I have a second value, 32.0 milliliters, which is a volume in milliliters. So right away, I have two volumes in milliliters, and I notice the first relationship, it has only one volume, but it must be in liters. But the second relationship has Vs for volume, and it doesn't designate specifically liters. So I'm going to say probably the best choice is the MAVA equals MBVB. So this is my jumping off board to solve this correct this uh, question correctly. So this is the relationship I'm going to use. Now notice, if I go back to the information, that the 20.0 milliliters belongs to a sample of HCl. It belongs to that. HCl is an acid, and you can find that on your table K. And if I notice, I see two subscripts of A, that probably refers to the idea of acid. So I have a volume of an acid. If I go back to where I underlined 32.0 milliliters, it says it belongs to this substance, KOH. And KOH metal plus the OH indicates that it's an Arrhenius base and I can see this as an example on table L. So, and I notice I have MB and VB so those little B's are referring to a base. So I have a volume of an acid and a volume of a base. Now, if I read carefully, after the 32.0 milliliters and after it and just before the formula of KOH I see a number, 0 0.05 or 0 0.50, capital M for molarity. So I have a capital M value, and it's sandwiched with the base, so I have an MB. So I have a VA, a VB, and an MB, so therefore the MA must be my unknown. So showing my correct numerical setup. So I'm going to leave it as MA, and I'm going to show it multiplied by the VA as 20.0 milliliters equals the MB, the 0 0.50 capital M, multiplied by its volume of 32.0 milliliters. So right there, this is my correct numerical setup. So correct numerical setup. First criteria to earning my points is completed. Now I need a calculated result. So I'm going to multiply the 0.5 times the 32, and then I'm going to divide that product by the value of 20. So the MA, when I look at my calculator, it will show me 0 0.80 capital M. So this represents my final calculated result. So that is the result of the correct numerical setup. Now. 
question two, I don't, I'm not a big fan of how it's asked, because I think it's a little confusing. According to the data, to what number of significant figures should the calculated molarity be expressed? Basically asking you how many sig, sig figs should be in your answer. So take a look. We are multiplying and dividing, so the math here is multiplying and dividing. So when your math is based on multiplication and division, you round to the lower number of sig figs. So if I write this out, MA times the 20.0 equals the 0 0.50 times the 32.0. Notice I'm not leaving off digits of zero. The 20.0 has three sig figs, the 0 0.50, two sig figs, and the 32.0, three sig figs. So I have to round to the lower number. So that, the, that means my final answer should contain um, two sig figs. Okay. Now, questions three through five are based on the information given in this paragraph. Now, question three. Write the formula of the missing product. This is just a variation of, you know, balancing a reaction. So if you can't figure it out, here's a little technique that we use with balancing the equation. So I make like this little squirt card. So I see that Na is on both sides of the reaction, carbon's on both sides, uh, hydrogen's on both sides, and oxygen is on both sides. And all I'm going to simply do is count how many of each. So when I carefully look over here, here's Na, subscript of one, but a coefficient of three, so I have a total of three NAs on the reactant side. Now I need to count on the left hand side, or the right hand side. On the product side, here's NA, subscript of three, coefficient of one, so three NAs. So right now, all of my NAs are accounted for, so I know it's not part of the missing product. Okay? Now I'm going to do my count for carbon. Here I have six carbons times a coefficient of one is six, so I have six there. Plus I notice I have carbon in this other reactant, subscript of one, but a coefficient of three, so it's six plus three, so my carbon count on the reactant side is nine. I need to do a similar count on the right hand side, so I see, oh, here's a carbon in this first product, subscript of one, subscript of six, coefficient of one, so I have six carbons in that product, and I notice I have carbon in the other product, subscript of one, coefficient of three, meaning there's three carbons, so total nine. So my carbon count is the same on both sides, so I'm going to cross it off. Okay, now I have to count my hydrogens. So first substance, I got to be careful here. So here I see H3 and H5 but a coefficient of 1, so I have a 3 plus a 5, and then when I look at the next reactant, I see that there's an H, subscript of 1, with a coefficient of 3, so that's 3 more hydrogens. So on the left, I see a total of 11 hydrogens. On the right-hand side, my first product has hydrogen, and it's only shown in one position, which there are five. Second product, no hydrogens. So I only have five. Eleven and five don't match up. So that means this missing product must have some hydrogens in it. So I'm going to do a little math. So eleven minus five means I have six hydrogens missing from this, from the product side. But I notice my missing product has a subscript of three, right? And so those six hydrogens have to be distributed among three molecules, so that means two. Okay? So I know at least my missing product is H2. Now I have to take a look at one more element. So I see in my first reactant it has seven oxygen, so I'm going to write down a 7. My second reactant has oxygen, 
the subscript of 3, but there's also a coefficient of 3, so that means it is providing a total of 9 oxygens here. So 7 plus 9 gives me 16 oxygens on the reactant side. So that means I need to have 16 oxygens on the product side. So my first uh, product, I see oxygen with a subscript of 7. I see that I have a second product that has oxygen in it. Okay? And it has a subscript of 2 and a coefficient of 3, so I know that supplies 6. And when I add that up, that's a total of 13 oxygens. The count is not the same, so I'm going to do a similar thing. So 16 is what I must have. I'm showing 13, so that means I have 3 oxygens missing from this. So oxygen, and I have to figure out its subscript. But these three oxygens need to be distributed among three molecules. So three divided by three is one. So that means if I substitute in what I calculated for X and Y, it's H2, H2O1. So I really don't need to show that subscript of one. So best final answer is simply H2O. Okay. Now, question number four, it's a state evidence. So if it's a state evidence, you need to use data, compare data. So state evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred. So think about it. This year we learned things that we can look for in the lab that represent a chemical reaction or a chemical change. Okay, so we bring two substances together and they ignite into fire. Definitely chemical change. Okay, um, if we see a precipitate forming. We pour two solutions together and a little fine powder starts to sprinkle down and collect. That's evidence of a chemical reaction. And the other thing is some sort of fizzing or bubbles. That means a gas is being produced or released. So we're looking for ideas of this back in the information. So when we read the second sentence, when a tablet dissolves in water, bubbles of CO2 are produced. There's our evidence. I'm not going to write anything different. I'm just going to simply copy down that part of the information. Bubbles of CO2 are produced. There we go. So if I know what I'm looking for, for data evidence, I found it right there. Now the last one. Determine the total number of moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate that will completely react with citric acid. So if I go back up to the information, I see that the citric acid has this really complicated formula, and I'm just going to write CA, citric acid. Then I see this terminology, sodium hydrogen carbonate, and I see its formula so I'm just going to, and I guess I can see that because of the Na. So that's the sodium, hydrogen, and carbonate. You should recognize that. So when I go down here, I'm going to say citric acid to my NaHCO3. In the reaction, their ratio, okay, is a 1 to 3. That's their ratio. So every time I want to have a complete reaction, I have to maintain this relative number of moles. So in the lab, okay, I am going to be using, according to this, so this is in the lab, I'm going to use 0 .010 moles. Well, if I'm going to maintain the same ratio of 3 to 1, I have to figure out what this is going to be. So here we go. If I have 0 0.010 moles I am using, and the ratio is a 3 to 1 of the sodium hydrogen carbonate, then that means that I must be using 0.03 moles of the NaHCO3. So 
when I'm comparing moles between two different substances, I have to maintain the ratio. Maintain the ratio. That's the big, oops, so you can see what I wrote. So the big idea is I need to maintain the ratio.